Hello, how's it in the name of Jesus Christ? It's your girl, Krenkege Garabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you are Stella. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. If not, party. Welcome to it. Uh, nobody here is cool. The world is it coming to an end, I'm already sure. But what I'm certain of is that mine is, if I don't get back to exercise. Alrighty. <sighs> it's hot, it's boiling. A little bit of sun is piercing through on the outside. Because it's uh, not yet sunset, or it is currently sunset. It's 1842. I really just want to like Speedy Gonzalez ride through this, guys. You know, I'd like... I do not want to repeat myself like over and over again so I did say that if I just get repeat offenses I'm just gonna do like a five minute video and be done but besides wanting to do a five minute video and be done I also realized that I need to change things um I need to adjust like how in the world and heaven it is that I do things otherwise I'm just gonna get killing me softly weedy shong killing me softly I've been making excuses um about exercise and I just like need to find a way around those excuses because I remember a time I could think of better days when I was just very consistent and nothing literally hell or high water rain or shine made me stop exercise and that stuff that stuff yeah gotta come back okay so it's scorching it is boiling like thoroughly and because it's boiling we need our fan because we have to switch off the regular fan oh, what do i want to say okay first let me put some caveats out there my captions they're not always accurate my fan it just keeps breaking uh, my captions are not always accurate, so look out for that. Sometimes they're misspelled, sometimes it's the wrong word altogether, sometimes it uses a small g for god, blah, blah, etc. I don't have time to edit them, but yeah, um, maybe one day's one day. I don't know, we'll see about that. But yeah, that's a really good service, by the way, that CapCut offers. You can edit them later um, instead of like buying a very expensive service to get them done in the first place. Okay, what else do I want to say? makeup i may or may not be wearing application makeup if i am you'll know because it's going to be bouncing off all over the show bouncing around and then i've got this like thing going on over here which is a white cast sunscreen and it's just going to be blustering you y'all can see that there's like a demarcation or from like where it is that the sunscreen starts or not like yo it's just there so just look out for it it is what it is uh i then have like a segment now where i blush my cheeks to show people that I'm human, if you prick me, I bleed, but it's getting boring. But let me just like do it anyway, just in case you're like intrigued by the prospect of that being a thing. Boom. There's evidence of the fact that I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. Don't take a chance on me. <sighs> Alright, let's get into the topic of today. Why in the world am I talking? Like, I'm exhausted from the same things being repeated over and over again. Like, yo. So. Back in the day, I had a dream about this one cousin. I used to smoke cigarettes, okay? I used to smoke cigarettes when I was very young and I was just like, yeah, whatever. I didn't even like it. I eventually quit it. I started smoking cigarettes when I was like 17 and then I, um, <clears throat> I stopped uh, when I was like maybe 23, 24 because it was just worthless it like yeah I, I never ever grew they never grew on me uh even though i just kept doing it it was peer pressure so thank god i dropped the habit right oh cool beans and bananas well this cousin i've had a dream uh historically of her throwing a cigarette a lit cigarette in a room where i was sleeping uh and i woke up and realized there was a burning cigarette on the floor and i took it and i threw it outside all irritated and then she threw it back in and she like I, I was you know how with dreams you can see from vantage from various vantages vantage points like from different dimensions from different angles you can see the same thing happening it's weird like that um it's just the dream space anyway whatever yeah so i could see this chick from even outside where she was it was at my grandmother's house in a bedroom there and that house every time i get i get dreams with it being the the domicile the the region the area where the dreams are happening it tells me it's witchcraft is regression is trying to take me back and what have you to something that it doesn't make sense anyway so i was in my grandmother's bedroom old bedroom and what have you that house is still uh, ha inhabited today by my family members but uh yeah anyway it always reminds me of back in the day no sorry it is never mind back in the day but it's a regression dream okay when you dream about being in school high school all that jazz be afraid be very afraid especially when the dream is very dark to check out those cues anywho so this cousin in this dream was outside of the bedroom of my grandmother um but i was sleeping in there and she 
threw a cigarette inside and I, I, I woke up and could sniff that there was a cigarette. I saw it on the floor. I picked it up and I threw it back outside again. Um, as lit as it was and I saw from a different angle her being outside on her face she was incredibly irritated to a point of creasing her forehead you could see the 11s uh, on some she just needs to smoke now she must smoke again she must smoke again uh, so she throws the cigarette back in and then I pick it up yet again and I throw it outside and the dream pretty much continued in a loop like that until it stopped or I woke up I can't remember that at that stage when I had that dream I was still employed I was still okay life was still thriving for me I was good uh nothing had yet fallen apart so when I woke up from it I just I, uh, during the time when I was still employed I brushed off a lot of my dreams I didn't see them as much I didn't realize it was witchcraft I didn't see yeah you get my point very well that was that dream and then around the same time when I was still employed I had yet another dream of my cousin right she was having in my dream an adult an affair an adulterous affair uh an affair basically with a married man in and of herself she in that dream was not married and she was having an affair with with this married man and this married man was treating her like a scum of the earth like he would just have sex with her and then be like okay it's time to go now goodbye it's not like he was in love with her he was just happy to humor a single woman that's prepared to basically give him bojote bachachem and in my dream she was crying and all upset and then she would enter into a depth of anger like a lot of anger at me like she was angry at me like here it is that this married man is treating her like trash and then she feels angry at me and in that dream she then went and grabbed me from wherever i was because somehow strangely i was in that ecosystem and she threw me in the room where this married man was at right on some take her do the same thing that you are doing to me to her and i just looked at the situation on some what am i doing here i want to go and it's like i was being coerced and this married man guy was just standing there looking like a shadow figure like a dark black figure that was just standing there as i was being thrown to him and this cousin of mine in all of her anger was trying to throw me to this married man right that dream ended more or less around those same ends goals strivings what about a fish paste whatever so again yet again i get another dream about this cousin and this time around she wasn't all by herself um in my dream there were quite a few forces so there are these two guys i used to work with at mtn that did me dirty anyway they were in my dream i have arachnophobia that is a fear of spiders okay just naturally however i'm improving i'm getting better because there's so many of them crawling around me these days that like proper conquer the fear or deal or just like die yeah like i just doomed one now in the corner over there so my arachnophobia is not as extreme as it used to be but it is still there right if i were to see a big fat giant tarantula i'd probably pass away Alrighty, cool beans and bananas so because i've always had arachnophobia as an issue the lord always uses spiders in my dreams and big ones that are very unfathomably scary to show me something that is instilling fear in my life but you know fear not for i am with you type thing he's busy telling me just like arachnophobia it's an irrational fear Garabo. it's like proper um, like you have you are scared for no reason because i got this anyway with that banquet that information sit on it mm -hmm. yeah so i wake up in this dream and uh so i used to stay at the time i was employed and everything i had moved out of my apartment to live at my mom's house because i wanted to finish paying off my debt so that i could buy a house okay so in this dream uh, in the season of having this dream i was living at my mother's house right uh and in my mother's house in ramsa where she stayed uh, there were three bedrooms and one of the bedrooms i guess was mine and it was a very spacious house and my mom had an unsweet bathroom while we had also an unsweet bathroom like the one the bathroom for the children if you want to call it that um it was a walk-in from both bedrooms like it was a bathroom and then the one bedroom went into the bathroom and then the other bedroom went into the bathroom so there were two doors to that bathroom both doors of which were from the bedrooms where you could go in so you could say to a certain extent that the kids bedrooms also were ensuite because they also had their own bathroom it's just that it was a shared bathroom between two siblings very well cool so um it was essentially a very beautiful house and it was a very beautiful uh it was a spacious bedroom i also had my own like flat screen tv on the wall and yeah very comfortable living conditions those uh she lost that house because that's just what happens when people don't honor god they 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 make mistakes that cause them to lose quite a lot uh you know there is um the bible says that if you suffer for doing good 
well done blessed are you but when you suffer for doing evil then dololo you had it coming yeah my mother lost everything because she had it coming she lost that house because of her irresponsibility with me or whatever but it was a very beautiful house um and this house in Reimsuch, I had this like very comfortable bedroom, yeah, that I that was mine, and I was living there, and I was gonna move out of there maybe after like a year or two after basically being ready to do such a thing as that. Okay, very well. I was already born again at this stage, but despite being saved, I was not aware of my dreams. I didn't understand them yet. I only came to confirm what I was seeing in my dreams after losing everything because everything just came back to me, and I was like, yes, like it. Everything I dreamt about is literally coming to pass like what in the world the lord was showing me impending persecution he was showing me impending trouble and so that's when i started to respect my dreams but before then i just brushed them off as just a dream and i went to work in the morning very well so in this dream uh i was living in Ramsach at my mom's house the thing about dreams whenever there's a curse an operation inside a dream that which is is very uh, elaborate in waking life uh, big yawning spacious deliciously beautiful um is just very insignificant it's minuscule it's microscopic it it pales in comparison to the waking life reality that is the law showing a curse that is the law showing destruction or uh, theft you know what i mean yeah I, I just described the bedroom that i used to live in or i guess sleep in when i was living in my mom's house prior to me come not coming to christ i was already in christ uh, prior to me losing everything right um i then I'll, i did eventually move out of my mom's house again because you know i was persecuted by her anyway whatever moving on in this dream i was sleeping on my bed oh uh, i have to mention that it was a queen sized bed in that bedroom it was a queen sized bed so it could fit me and three other people that are more or less my size very well cool so i wake up in this dream right you guys um i'm just cringing even thinking about it because like i said i've got arachnophobia so even the the mere discussion of such imagery as that can cause me shivers down my spine because i've got the problem i've got the crippling fear of those entities they're entities to me they're not just like you know arachnids they're the entities anyway whatever cool beans and bananas so i have fear of those entities um and in my dream i woke up from my bed and oh lord have mercy like you know what guys lord have mercy like lord have mercy now that i'm even retail retail re retelling this dream or relaying this dream i don't think i've ever told it before it's just t telling me a lot of stuff so i wake up from a bed and this bed is skinny like it looks like it could be a single bed or middle bed a mi you know a uh, three a uh, uh, one quarter a quarter bed it looks like it could be a quarter or a single um bed or yeah you get my three quarters or a single bed and i wake up out of it right and on top of me as i open my eyes there is this like nest it looked like god have mercy on me i don't want to describe this too much because then the imagery is gonna make me cringe and get all shivers but it looked like a, a, a bird's nest but like it was not a bird's nest it was like a an arachnid hive like a nest for 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 spiders like lots of them and they were just coming in and out of this hive and they were dangled almost like a hornet's nest like over my head like you know how hornet's nests hang on a tree bees nests you know how they hang on a tree yeah uh they that the, those spiders were hanging overhead as i woke up and they were above me they were above me you guys and i i screamed i released the most like sh shivering uh chilling scream out of my mouth because of seeing this thing and i was frantic ah, you know uh, brushing myself getting out of bed really quickly oh of these spiders that are overhead where it is that i was sleeping and as i released the shriek then out comes these two colleagues that did me dirty these two guys right one of them is uh oh let me just describe these two colleagues uh because their stature is important they were both very skinny no no skinny is the wrong word i guess skinny to a certain extent but they were little men they were tiny they were short they basically were uh, any man's worst nightmare to be a, a size do you understand men are, are not 
big fans of being short or skinny for that matter they prefer to be kind of oggy but bulky and tall um and these guys are in waking life anything but they're both really small guys they just well, looked very really small for their age they were past the age of puberty and everything and yet it looks like they never graduated past looking like a 7 or a 10 or a 12 year old anyway whatever that's what these men in stature look like in waking life they were my colleagues and they were friends and I, I had good relations with them you know but like it turns out that they didn't have good relations with me i've been stabbed in the back by literally everything and everyone that can stab me in the back people just hurt me for no reason at all i am quite a tall woman in waking life i'm 1.75 meters tall uh so yeah i've always had an issue uh, all throughout my life with dating uh in this country because south african men are very short some a lot of them south african black men they are very short um yeah it's it's rough to find a guy that's nice and tall they're in the black community for whatever reason in this country it's not a black thing uh generally because if you go up north in africa you find these like towers these kenyan men these senegalese these nigerian men they're just so tall but south african men for whatever reason they just fall short they're like the they got the short stick in africa i just yeah because we know that it's not a trend it's not a typicality that black men are short it's not if anything quite the opposite um they they can be big they can be huge black men can be massive but in south africa they're small like i don't know what's going on right that's why i need to leave this country anyway whatever right uh so here it is that these two small that mention of the size of these guys is not for the sake of emasculation or whatever it eventually comes in handy in this dream so you can understand what's going on right so here it is that these two guys rock up by a kamoga out of wherever in this dream where i'm sleeping in this one in this little tiny room this small little bed right that's much too small for a woman my size okay yeah because like i said i'm a tall woman but i was sleeping in this tiny bed it looked like a child's bed and there was this this nest of spiders on top of me that i was screaming at the room that i was sleeping in uh, was small it was cramped it was tiny it it looked nothing like the waking life room that i had like the room that i slept in i'm going to be doing edits as i speak you guys right so in the background that's what it is that i'm looking at up there uh, in waking life uh oh, goodness I need to be able to man maneuver my mouse with ease so i just need this pillow Alrighty, cool yeah in waking life i told you i just described to you guys the bedroom that i used to sleep in 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 my mother's house right it was spacious it had its own bathroom it had like this whole flat it was just a beautiful bedroom like any person's like dream really if you were a child growing up in a house that would be your dream bedroom and that's what i had i wasn't a child of course i was like a whole adult but remember i'd moved back home all right so it was it was ideal for a woman my age because it felt properly like my own apartment what have you very well and this particular room was narrow it was extremely small it was squeezed and it was narrow and the bed that i was sleeping in was also very tiny uh, it did not fit me on top of a, a, a bed there was this spider's nest and then i scream because i've got this crippling fear of spiders i'm an arachnophobe very well uh and as i squeal and screech like this jumping out of this bed that does not fit me that looks nothing like the bed that i have in waking life mind you i however in that dream was in my mother's house i understood it to be my mother's house in Reimsach. it's not like i was anywhere else you, that's the thing about dreams like i said something beautiful and in waking life quite elaborate it's pretty it's spacious will be cramped in a dream where there is a curse implied it will be it's uh, just you know as um a fraction of what it is that it is naturally normally it's going to be a fraction of that so i guess look out for these cues in dreams when you get them to gauge the, the curse in question that you might make war with it and also gauge the individuals that you get shown in the dream as the culprits they're the ones that are doing this to you evil they're the ones that are doing this to you right so that was those were the, that though that particular dream was the first one ever that i got showing me the sorcery of these guys from my office i would then later on continue to get a lot more
I would continue to get a lot more such dreams of this nature by especially the one guy uh yeah I would continue to get lots more exposing them but like I said I did not understand my dreams and because I spent so much of my time with them because like they were friends they were not just colleagues we were tight you know uh I imagine that because I spent so much time with them in the office we hang out gofella sometimes we have lunch gofella um type establishment thing that it's one of those like you know your subconscious you know people you hang out with them a lot and so they make it into your your dream space uh i thought that that's what that was i i did not uh, automatically infer anything diabolical i did not think anything nasty of that situation until i had to realize that hey girl like abandu people are not who they say they are okay people are not what they claim to be people are destructive people a masochists people are full of sabotage backstabbing people secretly hold horrible ambitions they secretly hold horrible intentions against you and you are walking around in these streets unawares to yourself hanging out with people that have literally sabotaged the living daylights out of your future and there is no way Jose that you can tell yeah so i would i would richly implore people to seriously like look deeply and consider loftily the content of their dreams because it is written in God's word that that's how he communicates to us just by the way let, let's put that out there in the book of Job the Lord says that or rather Job says as he is speaking about the Lord that he speaks to us in 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 phantoms and you know sorry he he speaks parables to us in phantoms in dreams yeah he scares us it, with dreams that we might repent or that we might basically act right so look out for your dreams and look out for the cues that tell you who to basically shut out draw a johari window i apologize guys i i'm doing edits so i'm 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 going to be all over the show uh, do a johari window of people in your life okay i need to think yeah because at this point i cannot multitask of of people based like yeah who to just keep at an arm's length if you're not sure what you're seeing just keep a, a, a safe distance from them no need to cut them off or whatever until you confirm from god that that's that that's what they're into in which case once you discover that that's what they're into if you if they're your colleague if you work with them i guess keep working but like literally leave it at that do no more than just work with them uh if they're friends cut them off cut them off because the disquieting thing about which is is that they insist they they like to stick around in your life so they can surveil their sorcery so they can keep tabs on it so they can map it, map it, map it sorry against a traceability matrix to gauge if it's going swimmingly and they they don't get guilty enough to stop they don't get uncomfortable enough to repent they literally can watch you for the rest of your life just struggling to break past a particular mold that they've put you in and that is a person that you should not have anywhere near you if at all you're going to be thrust into a lot of tumult if you're going to be put into some seas or some waters where you're going to have to fend for for yourself against entities you cannot be doing that in the presence of the person who threw you in that ocean the person oh la let's say go missing our abelang you cannot you cannot like you you thoroughly can so look out in your dreams for what it is that you are sh being shown and then once you basically suspect somebody take it to god in prayer to give you confirmation and also look at their behavior they tend to change around you their person that they they the way that they used to be with you ia change because they've done something to you so of course they feel uncomfortable around you whether that is guilt or just a self-fulfilling prophecy i don't know that causes them to act like that is irrelevant but you cannot keep a person that is manipulating the outcomes of your future with spirits in your life it is not it's not right neither is it safe and they won't stop if at all you keep conquering like if you conquer whatever it is that they did to you they will just go back to the drawing board and try again they're going to be coming back to you to keep to basically um tabulate what it is that you are doing to avert this to conquer to not go out like that and they will then counter your all your interventions with more sorcery believe me when i say that bajwalo it's like habana ho they don't stop guys even when like relationships flounder and they get found wanting or if even when they have a falling out with the person especially if they have a falling out with the person that they have afflicted they don't stop they they don't stop if anything they just go back to the drawing board they keep trying like over and over and over and over again to finish you off 
I'm not speaking here as a, a an embittered person. Do you understand what I'm saying? That just cannot stand everybody and so I'm accusing everything and everyone of things that they've not done. I'm speaking as an individual that has awarded shots, like as in m multiple opportunities, chances, to people who have done me dirty with sorcery before and said to them, do differently and it's water under the bridge like we'll go back to being good old-fashioned us as it was back in the day and they um abdicated the 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 the, the opportunity for reconciliation in favor of their selfish ambition for the outcomes of your life they literally chose to lose a friendship in order to finish you off like it happened with my former best friend and it keeps happening with like family members of mine etc like this one cousin of mine my, my, one of my my best cousins in the family like we were very tight i when i discovered what she was into i sent her an email and i told her i know but it's okay it's what under the bridge to stop doing what you're doing plus christ heals he forgives it doesn't have to get that deep i saw that you've started doing some strange stuff just stop and it's nothing literally like i said water under the bridge and she chose to ignore my email and carry on and with my knowledge like get Eva knowing that that's what she's doing and that's how it is that a lot of people that afflict me like this continue to do they continue to hurt me knowing that i know the knowledge of uh, of my knowledge all that it achieves is essentially a uh, broken or a devastated relationship we are no longer tight i guess we our friendship ends our camaraderie with one another ends yeah that's what that's all that it achieves it does not achieve repentance it does not make them stop because there are people who are determined for other people's destruction like they are literally determined for the destruction of their own family members or friends lives or whoever it is in question that is the victim uh during these streets so when i say look out like read 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 them remember first and foremost right seek the lord's face to remember them and when you do remember them look out for cues if it was a very disturbing dream with you looking anything other than what you presently are guys I'm, I'm i'm kidding i'm kidding you not right now okay like i lost everything having been shown that i would lose everything and yet at the time when i walked into my trauma i never fathomed that i would ever be in such a, pos a position like as this as that because guys i was so successful a day in my life i was so successful and i i was literally i had arrived like you know it, it's so hard to crack into certain environments and i'd already cracked into mine and so all that was needed now from this point forward was to just continue to trampoline upwards to continue to jump upwards because i was already on the right track and i got uprooted from that it was a, a big fat culture shock i was not in the days anymore where i was trying to get a job interview where i was trying to work for a certain company i had cracked into certain places that were very hard for me to initially crack into so I never fathomed that I would ever suffer want, not like this ever in my life, not a contingency I was ever planning. We understand life has peaks and troughs, ups and downs. You know, you move laterally sideways and got you're in an ocean and the waters are turbulent or you're in an airplane and there's lots of winds and lightning. Yeah, we get that life has those moments, but this level of being flattened to the ground with going absolutely nowhere and no amount of attempting to get out of it works. This here is anomalous and this here is pitiful and this here is the stuff of entities and this here is induced or inspired by people literally in your life in your life so when i say when you get dreams and they seem far-fetched ingati something of this nature can never happen uh -uh, no not me because look at what i'm doing right i'm okay in life it's not i might have a rough patch in life but goodness like I'm always going to be set. It's going to set me for life. Like, you know, when you get to a certain place in your space, in your life, where you're feeling that you're set for life because you conquered, you fought through waters and got somewhere that was very hard for you to get into. Basically, all that, like that carpet just gets pulled, that rug from under your feet, Nji, and you fall on your nose and you are anticipated, expected to commence from the very beginning again. You are expected to just start from scratch, uh, breaking literally with that uh, as a reputational flaw um on your part with that chilling on your neck as that's always going to be your history you are the person that had it all and you threw it away when people are trying to make it look as if to not breathe ever again when people are trying 
to make that appear as if though that's what you did to yourself it, it then gets very patronizing and that's why you cannot continue to have these people in your life you you can't you can't they are sporting with you very competitively to a point of literally observing almost like spectators at a game your either fall or rise and that sport that they watch is uh, basically for them a monitoring affair where they are looking at how it is that their sorcery is doing ever since they did something to you they are checking to see how, how, how are you boating how are you boating ever since by and what they did when you find out the only thing that is the difference between finding out um and not finding out is that when you find out relationship gets destroyed permanently like it's over y'all are no longer friends y'all are no longer talking like Pelile. this thing uh, there's nothing that's coming through in this relationship other than um cancellation deletion it's over cessation it's done Gupelile. yeah uh but then if you don't find out like i said these gangsters be out your monitoring people they will monitor you for the rest of your life they will patronize you they will be there for you when you are divorcing your husband they will be there for you when you are miscarrying after your miscarriage at the hospital they will be there for you after they caused the thing that made you need to cry on their shoulders in the first place so you gotta look out for cues in your dreams to see who in the world under heaven you know is being shown you and once you see them you can't just of course randomly pounce on them with accusation you have to take it to god in prayer fast about it uh, seek the lord's face to help you confirm a lot of times when a person has done this to you in and of themselves they will change on you so automatically the relationship is going to become a little bit soured all right but there will be other things as well by keep but footy also man that will likely also help you continue to dream over and over again and i would highly advise you that once you discover that they've done something to you unga forced it do not confront them because i have don't confront them don't say god showed me that you did witchcraft because then they're just going to gaslight you and then they're going to try and get you thrown into a psychiatric hospital in a stray suit um just basically move on and you will make a, 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 an observation that once you have moved on they're not even going to follow you behind they're not going to call you they're not going to insist girl why you changed on me why are you all different abandon that hurt me after everything of mine crashed and burned they were so strangely silent they all just kept at a distance they were just observing the crash and the burn on some ha and did this thing works ain't nobody out to try to comfort me and it made sense later why they did not try to comfort me so you will see them you will see them for what they are uh so do not anticipate that when you get a dream with, with something so bizarre as a complete poverty as in when uh, you're on the street begging for money when, when it's so far-fetched as that do not imagine that it cannot happen because it happened to me it happened to me a completely thriving independent woman that found herself in so much poverty in so much severity in so much want basically tethering on the border of being a hobo yeah it happened yeah somebody that had that much prosperity and that bright a future found themselves bordering on homelessness yeah that's what these people do to you and they will observe you from a distance and even though they feel guilty they won't do jack so let me continue to tell you this dream so that y'all can be able to raise up from within your own crevices or whatever um some kind of a strategy to protect yourself from at a minimum being patronized by witches like at a minimum at a minimum and of course at a maximum protecting yourself against them my situation is a little bit extreme i do believe the lord is using me in order to make an example out of these people or whatever um so i don't think that the lord i don't believe the lord would put a lot of you in my exact dire straits i was chosen for this mission by whatever reasons it is that the lord will see it fit to um master up so i gotta take it every one step at a time one day at a time with all of my sorrow without complaining because he's the one that gave me the job so i gotta do it mm -hmm. he knew that i'd be able to explain this phenomenon he knew that i would be able to rock up in the midst of all of the sorrow and explain to people what's going on that they might find healing so he put me in this situation yeah but not everybody's gonna be thrown into it let's just put that out there so don't imagine that just because you dreamt of somebody impoverishing you to a point of begging on the side of the street um doesn't mean that it's gonna happen sometimes the lord will enable you by just the holy spirit you will conquer you will fast you will pray and that person will be humiliated but whether or not the lord allows you to go through the miry waters or if the lord stays you from that space you have got to get rid of certain people like you just cannot have them in your life because when you are free from the tumult that was impending you because you were that prayerful fasting saint 
<sighs> they will go back to the drawing board. Only look at what's going on in my life. People literally keep going back to the drawing board. And if I can you they are annoyed with the fact that I see. I see what they do. But I would I would go so far as to say that all of y'all, a lot of y'all also see. It's just that just like me, mm -hmm. you were getting a mampupo, you were getting dreams. Nelora, but you, I mean, you were so okay in life and that situation in the dream was so bizarre and so far-fetched, like I said, that you imagined it's nothing. You just brushed it off until boo. Here it is that you're in all of this torture. You're in all of this tumult. You're in all of this, tumult, in all of this situation. 10 years down the line, a whole decade down the line and you're still suffering and people are still carrying on doing whatever it is that they want to do. How do, let's just carry on giving the story, okay? Yeah, this particular dream. So in my dream, the thing... Well, I can feel it's a guy. Where is that I was in this uh, like very narrow room, um, very squeezed up ex establishment that I was in. I woke up. I was freaking out. I was, however, in my mother's house. However, the room that I was in did not compare to the waking life room at all. It was very substandard. It was lowly. It was mediocre. It was microscopic in its glory in comparison to the room in waking life. And after I scream and yell and get out of this bed where there are spiders hanging up top above me. Uh, these two colleagues impend they come out of nowhere and they are laughing at me like literally Hosing themselves. Okay Hysterical stitches and everything just laughing at a person that is screaming because she is an arachnophobe She has an arachnophobe and she woke up with like the whole like just a nest of spiders crawling above head and I came to discover that these two guys are the ones that put that nest up there in other words it was a prank they put the nest up there knowing that i've got a, a crippling fear of spiders and when i woke up screaming they laughed at me and i was still in a lot of fear i was frankly inconsolable i was shaking like a leaf in my dream i was sweaty i was crying i was hysterical do you understand and in that adrenaline response of mine I was being laughed at I was being laughed at until ultimately right here it is that they're giggling these two guys they're laughing at me historically because they've just pulled the stunt on me uh one of them the lesser of the two evils even though they're both evil right discovered he realized it happened upon him the recognition that this is serious like this person is not recovering she could get a heart attack she could die from this fear like the one guy came to a conclusion that Garabo could die because she's still scared here it is that we're telling her it's a prank and she's still screaming she's still hysterical so he got a little bit more serious and he started to comfort me he started to like you know askis askis askisi askisi relax like whoa it's a prank it's a prank except in my dream while this was apparently a prank the spiders were real they were real it's not like they pranked me with fake plastic spiders they were real they were real living spiders the nest and they were crawling all over the room and so i was in a real fear i was in real fear experiencing my phobia and they still laughing and the one guy is still laughing he could not care less that i am frantic but the other dude real is then made a, a realization that this person is in a frenzy and if this stuff does not stop she's gonna die she's gonna die literally from fear from just being scared like no man's business she's just going to be pushed to the end of herself so he started to comfort me but like i said i was not calming down and then uh wearing nothing but red like red whenever i see people wearing red clothes in my dreams they it always represents witchcraft the, this took it's not true for everybody so don't go and apply it to yourself it took a, a long time for me to basically unravel or interpret my dreams based on cues that i get and one thing that i spotted across many of my dreams is that the color red that's god telling me involvement of witchcraft or uh what is this P presence of sorcery and if if the room is red it says that this the presence of sorcery and if the person is wearing red it says that that's the witch it says that that's the person that is doing this thing so red and also red and black mixed together in my dreams don't say anything valuable okay very well so uh this cousin of mine gets into the gets into this bedroom that i am sleeping in where i'm frantically screaming and uh she's wearing nothing but red like literally blood red from tip to toe it's almost like it was a cape yeah red never mind pants and like a shirt or whatnot yeah she walks in 
into this bedroom and very calm and a very cavalier constitution without uh gauging or rather appropriately responding to the seriousness of the matter she is like whoa i heard you screaming so that cousin did not live with us at all she's actually never lived with us but for whatever reason she was there that morning right she comes into my bedroom and she's like ah wah, screamy wah. i can hear you screaming outside you know what's wrong like what's the issue like why are you screaming so much relax and then she pulls me out of that bedroom okay she pulls me out of that bedroom and then once i'm out of that bedroom my mother's house was very beautiful that house in Remsach, it was it was very 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 pretty okay uh and i was in the kitchen in front of the microwave yeah uh and i was okay so back in the day when i was employed i used to really go out of my way to get myself all dolled up for work i dressed like no man's business i used to kill it that's what i'm getting at beautiful shoes beautiful dresses beautiful jewelry like hair on fleek i was that put together girl all right uh, uh, yeah umona you discover just how wonderful you are when people all want you destroyed and you are like ah i didn't even know i was that wonderful well thanks for confirming it but one thing i had going for myself that i did not have any doubts about was the fact that i could dress i could put a good outfit together let's go on like so i'm poor now but i can really really dress right totally could have done a fashion blog out here in the streets and it was no different in the office so i was wearing this beautiful navy blue dress that um i bought from trenary go it, it was a trenary dress you know trenary trenary yako woolies yeah they've got like this section of the just gorgeous gorgeous female apparel that well i don't know if they've gone male now but it's just beautiful couture for women um that i used to buy a lot of my office outfits my office fits my, my office fits my office suits i used to like purchase a lot of them go go willies uh the trinary brand i was like a massive like gargantuan fan and i had this gorgeous like dress yeah trinary that had i think i still have it i don't know where it's at i could actually show it to you but i'm on the mood of going go oh no i need to charge battery low 15 percent battery low battery low what is happening battery low 15 percent charge 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 yeah and the battery's dying quickly because the room is so hot but thank goodness this phone functions unlike all these other phones hey yo i just plugged the charger why isn't this thing charging oh it's because cashies ish or did i unplug this by mistake I definitely did not unplug it. This thing wants to die. Oh no. Ish. Come on, man. You cannot do this to me. It's hot. That's why. Why is the charger not charging? Battery power now 13%. It's like it, you know. I, I cannot work early. For these reasons so now i gotta stop recording until when like literally until when oh guys yes he yes like it meant my life let's move to the next part guys because this thing is just gonna die on me i have a little charger because this room is just boiling perhaps i should just let it calm down while i look for the dress yako trinary <laughs> 